Welcome to I Love Stocks, and I got a few tickers I want to talk about that the room asked me to talk about tonight. And they're going to be Plug, Workhorse, Snow, which we're having a lot around here, SKLZ, XL, HYLN, that had some big pop on news, and Fubo for entertainment. So let's get right straight to the charts. I'll try to find me one that I can play with right here. We'll go ahead and type in Plug. You know, it's all about the batteries. It's all about charging stations. It's all about the new economy and the new gig economy that's coming up with the EV cars. And can you imagine taking a car and flying it straight up into space? I think that's coming soon. Maybe in another 10, 15 years. Probably after my lifetime, but who knows? I thought they'd never legalize marijuana, and they've been doing that too. So let's go ahead and get straight to the stock. We're going to look at plug. I'm going to pull up the yearly chart. I cleaned it all up. Start fresh. Whoops, that's the 20 day. We've been going sideways. I can tell on a 20 day there. But we've had a nice run. And we're starting to flag out a little bit. And that's what I mean by flag out. We're going to show you. We're going to draw a couple trend lines. Which means we're getting ready to squeeze or we're going to pull back. It depends on market conditions. We do have a four-day weekend, I mean three-day weekend coming up. So tomorrow is the big day to see if his stock wants to hold. But we got we got here is a pennant flag. We have the flag pull right here. This is on the on the um, no month and a half chart since we've had the run. And I think we're getting ready to squeeze. We could probably bounce up a little bit and pull back a couple more times. But we did find a little support level here, if I'm looking at this chart correctly. So let's go ahead and pull up the 20 day. I got the one year up, so we're going to look at the 20 day. And I'm going to draw a trend line across horizontal lines. And see if I can't find me a nice little support level and a pivot point level on this 20 day chart. And the pivot point on it right now is going to be right in here. And I'll show you why. Whoops, got to change this to my right tools. I hope you all enjoyed yesterday's video. I'll try to get one of these out a day if I can, if my mind's set to it. The 64.93 is like a pivot point on the 20-day channel because you see some resistance levels that we couldn't break here a couple times, and then when we did break it, she fell on back and fell below it and found more resistance right in there. Same as found support off these pullbacks right in here. So if I extend this on out to the right, which I can, and then I'm going to extend this out to the right, make sure it, so when we squeeze, I think we can still go sideways with this. Now any kind of drop, any kind of support level, I'm thinking it's going to be, that first one's going to be right in here where these two bars are here that happened a couple weeks ago, right there at 6206. Then you got your strong buy right down here. That depends, you know, if the market conditions are in our favor. Right now, I think we hit kind of like a sell signal on the market. And we're probably expecting a little pullback at least until Friday. And then probably come back next week and average out uh, flat. And then we'll start to have another run in about a week and a half in about two weeks in the market is my opinion. So I think we're going to have a little, not a bad week next week. And we're just going to kind of correct this week and then take the four days off. It depends on what tomorrow is going to look like. So we've got resistance levels that we're going to have to break. And that's going to be right up in here. The double top, this position right up in here where we had a high here, had a high here, and had a triple top right here. Right at around 70 bucks. So that's going to be your hard resistance. Now this thing can probably bounce above this resistance level of 64.93 and then maybe find find some equilibrium right up here right around 66.95 and then maybe that next resistance is going to be that that 68.42 right where that trend line is i use the lower highs and the higher lows 
to try to get some kind of idea of where this stock's going. We do have higher lows, so that's a good thing. That's a good thing in this in this situation. So I think we could hold support tomorrow. I'd like to see a nice little bounce up and try to break this resistance level, the pivot point at 64.93. And I'm going to just color that in red because that's going to be the hard resistance to break. And then if we do break it, that red line will now become support. So if we can break past that, we could probably take this trade up to 65.86. The next one's going to be at 66.95 and 68.42 with a long of $70. And I don't know if it'll break that or not. But that's a triple top, or at least a double top, after we had this huge breakout right here. Had this little head and shoulders, and she kind of just flagged out. And So, yeah, I think low support right down here at 62.06 needs to hold. Actually, this trend line right here needs to hold off this line that's right around 63.50. If that doesn't hold, we'll take it down to 62, and then a strong buy down here at 59.73. Again, with the resistance to break is the pivot point, and that's right at 64. What did I say that was? Can barely see it. 64.98, something like that. Magnify it again so I can see this thing. 64.93. Then your next resistance levels are going to be the three up here to run into this trend line, and then she'll pull back. But let's see if we can get a little fish hook out of this and have it come back up and break that resistance. And that's plug. Workhorse. I'm I'm semi bearish. I'm bullish on this trade, but. It, market conditions are telling us a little bit different right now. So everybody's going to take a little bit of profit because of all these enormous runs we've had. And I talked about irrational exuberance last week in the video. So that's what I'm talking about. That's why I had to put that video out because this market is irrational. Next one we're going to talk about is Workhorse. WKHS. WKHS. Now, we've got a low support down here off the 200. I'm going to go ahead and clear. Well, I don't need to clear this chart up. I'll just leave. Nah, let's clear it out. Let's start fresh. It's going to be one of them fresh days. Pull up the yearly chart. We'll see what kind of run this sucker's had for a year. Workhorse uh, is popping for, one, for a couple of reasons. But for one is that Joe Biden says he wants to uh, fix the whole fleet at the White House. And this was one of the catalysts that made this stock run. That was just one of them. But I'm talking like 600,000 cars. He wants to turn them into electric vehicles. That's what rumor says. So we've got a strong buy, strong support level right down here, right around the $31 area, right here from this previous high. And then we're going to find us a little place right up in here, right around 34.21. Thirty-six forty-three, and then we're going to put it right here on the bodies of these candles. See, I'm not using the wicks. They don't mean much to me at all unless I want a confirmation. And for example, when I say confirmation, like if I was going to look for another support up here and I see these bodies of this candle, I'm going to draw that line right there. And then I use this for a confirmation, these wicks. Because usually that's when you see sellers come into the game or you see buyers come into the game. It depends on which way the wick is positioned. For right here, example, you have a spin and top, it ran up. Here you have a, a upside down hammer, inverse hammer, it ran down, it, uh, it pulled back, and then it had that nice little breakout. So that's, support level is at $31 for a strong buy. Your second one's at $34.21, and then you got $36.43. Definitely want to see that 31 hold. Resistance to break is going to be that 4119, and this is workhorse. So I kind of expect a little pullback on this one too. Maybe down to the second support level at 3421, but a strong buy at 31 bucks. And the next one we're going to talk about snow. Snow, uh, I took a trade on snow last week, scalped it twice in a little channel. I had a resistance and I needed to break on snow. Let's go ahead and pull this up. We had a nice little pullback on it. We've had that 296.38. Let's pull up the 20-day and see if... Well, I'm going to pull up the year and clean this chart up too. 
I'm just cleaning up everything because I just been marking these up and trading them throughout the day. You see how she's touched this 200 a couple of times? We could expect that same thing right again. If the market conditions are the way they're talking to me right now, we could probably have another. But if it holds these moving averages, that'll be great. But a strong buy is going to be right down here, right around 175 off this 200 EMA. So I'm going to draw a couple trend lines. Got one right here for a low support. We got a pivot point on the year. I'm hard to say, hard to say. Hard to say where that pivot point is. I'm going to kind of guess right in here. It's a pretty messed up chart. And we've got a little bit of support level right in here off this candle here. This candle right in here. Then we've got a pullback support right here on this candle right here. Then i got to try to find an equilibrium in this chart, in this channel. And that's going to be right there at 281.25. Resistance to break up here at 309. So let's bring this up to the 20 day and I can get a little better picture of what I'm looking at. See, see how this line here needs to be raised up to that almost to that $300 level. That's where we're going to put that. I'm going to change this to red. This is a very important line right here. It's 300 bucks. And right now we closed at 298.73. What is she doing after hours? We'll see in sales 298.88. 298, 298.73. So eh, not much to to go home and cry about but we did pull back to this 200 EMA on the 20 day one hour oh I want to see something else on here I think it had a bunch of upgrades yesterday if I remember right here kind of look at the news nope 13G okay Snowflake shares are trading higher on continuum momentum from yesterday after the company's 13G showed up, although Johnson had a stake of 5.39%. So they are expecting this stock to run up a lot more. Definitely throwing in that kind of money. So they, somebody likes this company. So this is going to be your pivot point area on the 20-day, and that's going to be this 293 294 area and I'm going to color that in red so we've got support levels and we got resistance levels we got the pivot point right here like I said at that 294 area 294.14 so I can pull back to that 294. Personally, I'd like to see it hold this 20-day 200. If not, today was a real critical day. I'm, I'm still feeling that the market needs to have a little bit more of a correction because I just think we've had too much of a pop. A lot of these pot stocks, for example, have just run like crazy. And a lot of them pulled back today. And it's just, just irrational the way they're running. They need to pull back probably about 50 percent but who knows the momentum is what we ride and we we watch the tape and we watch the money coming in the money flow so yeah so we've got this 294 needs to hold and the resistance to break is going to be right here at 300 if we can get past 300 we could probably run this back up to and this is snow to the center of this here channel we'll find a little pivot point in here right at 30410 maybe 30 about 304 that's going to be your next resistance and then take it back up on up here to run around 306 and then that 3010 long support levels what i want to see hold see, just just a huge run all the way from 265 all the way to to 325 in a matter of 2 weeks see that's just and you look for a 50% retracement if you notice on my Fibonacci setup here, we pulled that support level that I called and I just now noticed is at 50%. So I definitely think we can pull back here 
and then try to gain some respect. If not, it'll pull back to these lower supports. But I'm kind of semi-bullish on snow, especially if it pulls back to a lower level. And that's probably right. When we called this, I called this out with a friend uh, back here when it was down here at this low support of 265. So let's see, this support, if that 300 doesn't hold, we're going to be looking at this here 294.14 for your next second support and then maybe a strong buy right down here at 290.63. That needs to hold. I think that's where I want to get into the trade. And then if it does decide to reverse, we could probably break resistance up here at 309. And we got that 306.65 and that 304 area. At Snow, the next one we're going to talk about is SKLZ Skills. SKLZ. It's had a nice little five day pullback. It's had a real nice spike up. I want to see what kind of news is a catalyst to bring this stock up on this day right here. And I want to pull this down. So this was on the uh, 4th. Had multi-year gaming agreement so the, all the game stocks are running pretty good they're definitely bullish um, a few of them have started to pull back HIMZ had a pullback today that's another one you might want HIMX that's another one you might want to look at but we did kind of pull back to support level right here today and that's right around this I'm gonna sit right here right at 37.54 we closed at 37.48. So your lower support is going to be probably right down here at the 50% pullback on the Fibonacci on the 20 day one hour chart. And that runs right into that 200 for double confirmation. So I'm going to go ahead and put that 35.22 right in here. Then you have a strong buy down here at 31.57. Resistance to break, I think, is around 38.93. 4021 and then maybe up here right around 4026 right right there right around 4160 i mean so now we got don't have any, anything in between here but what i'd like to see is this 3534 hold and start to reverse back up now we have a very solid 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 support if it decides to pull back and we have a, do have a major market correction to this 2989 area that's where we had this double this whole week where it just kind of consolidated at resistance pulled back and then we had that breakout and bam so first support 3522 if that does not hold we're going to have to get on down let's see if we can change the time frame in here and i'll try to find an equilibrium in here but if i'm serious if this number doesn't hold at 3522 we might be able to pull back to that 3157. Resistance she decides to turn around. We have three resistances to break 39,893, 4021, and then that 4160. And that's SKLZ. And the next one we're going to talk about is XL. XL. XL's also had a pullback here. XL Fleet Corporation. See if there's anything, no news in here. Let's see what happened on the third calendar to develop electric and plug in hybrid. Oh, refused truck. So there you go. Everything's about the EV car sector. And even uh, Tesla started pulling back today because, or yesterday because of the uh, Chinese, China regulators. They're wanting to crack down on Tesla. And I kind of called that out a, a couple months back. I said, my only negative catalyst in China is China so the China government so we got a support level here at 1892 that needs to hold on XL I think this this is going to be still bullish in my opinion but everything's kind of pulling back and correcting it did not want to break this resistance level that I had up here on the ascending triangle actually we broke out of it I want to move this to the right What happened yesterday was very important. It decided to pull back. We could be consolidating here in the second support off of this. But for right now, if we consolidate in here, we can bounce back up and try to break this 200 EMA on a 20-day chart at 2027. 20, 
If not, this 19 really needs to hold. It's very important that we hold that triple bottom. Right, well, actually, it's going to be a quad bottom if you want to count this little bitty wick. And that's right there, just under 19 at 1892, with a resistance to break of 2190. Excuse me. The next one we're going to talk about is HYLN. HYLN had some news today. I'm going to type that in here. The news, you know, I'm talking about the EV car sector and the battery packs. It's very important that they keep experimenting on these battery packs and its energy saving devices. So they introduced a new generation battery module to improve the performance and efficiency of the battery. The new design features advanced cooling technology that will enable, enable longer battery life, higher charging rates, and improved safety. Redesigned battery module features industrial leading Toshiba LTO battery cells. So this is, was big news for this stock today. I, once I saw the news, and I wish I'd have seen it earlier, someone in the room pointed it out. Mr. Time Direction, thank you very much. So we're going to kind of look at the chart now and see what the chart tells us. This beautiful breakout. We're pulling back here after hours. We did have climb up after hours, as you can see. Well, we didn't climb up. We had that 22.50 high. So let's pull this back to the 20 day. And support level right here. I'm looking at these resistance levels, this triple right in here. And I'm going to try to find me a little place right there at 18.06. And I'm looking in this area right in here for some, some kind of Right here, you see where we've got this candle break right here? We got the wicks touching here. We got these right in here, right in here, right in here. So I'm going to put my guideline right off this candle right here at 1834. And then I'm going to run it all the way to the top at 1953. And then I'm going to find another equilibrium right in here at 1895. Seventeen ninety six, and then it's low, low down here at six seventeen bucks. So let's pull this back up and take a look at it. I gave you the news; it was excellent. That doesn't mean the stock's going to run up to the moon. Yes, it means you just got to when you have these engulfing breakouts like this, you got to be patient. Either jump in the trade early, take it on the spike up, and wait for the pullback. And I'm going to tell you where I first solid support level is, and that's going to be right here at 1953 from this previous high we had right here. Bam. If not, your next solid support is going to be right down here at this other red line at $18. And I'm going to color that in. $18. Bucks. 2076 is your hard resistance. So we got solid support here at 1953. That needs to hold. If not, we've got two other support levels and then a strong, strong buy at 18 bucks. If it does pull back to 18 tomorrow, that's only a $2 dip. I can see that happening. And if it does, I might take that trade come tomorrow and scalp it back up to resistance level of 1953. If not, the resistance that we do have to break is this 2076 all the way to 2192. And then maybe try to double top up here at 22, 2225. And then the last one we're going to talk about is Fubo. So I like this H-Y-L-N. I mean, there's a lot of sectors that you're going to have to be looking at in the EV car market. Steel, uh, um, any kind of uh, uh, batteries, any kind of technology that chips. Uh, so there's just all kinds of little sectors to look at. Fubo is the next one we're going to talk about. F-U-B-O. 
This one here, someone asked me about in the room. I think, you know, we've got like a five day. It didn't hold that five day and it pulled back another day. Now I've got a strong buy down here at this green line. I kind of know that they're not making a lot of money yet, but they are, uh, it's a, they, they are a good company. And they do have offerings every once in a while. So you got to kind of watch out for that because they still need to bring that capital in. But here at 42.39, I think it's a solid support. That's I'd like to raise this last support channel here, raise that bar up. So I'm hoping that this 42.39 holds. If not, we've got 40.83 and we've got 39.85 with another strong buy on the top of the channel right here at 39 bucks. Now the resistance to break is going to be past that 200 EMA on a 20 day, one hour chart. And that needs to be right up here, right around 4574. And we're actually right around 4615 would be a nice place to go ahead and break that resistance level there. And then the next one's going to be right up here, right around 49. So it's either going to pull back. I think it can pull back a little bit more, but you never know. Tomorrow is Friday. Then we got that long weekend coming up Friday, Saturday, or uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off, and then we come back to work on Tuesday. So the resistance levels again, the support levels is going to be no lower than 39. And then you got this other support channel at 39.85 to 40.83. And then that first channel right here at 42.39, which I'd like to see hold. If not, we'll go ahead and break resistance up here at 46.15. And then try to take it up here to right around the 49.33 level. And that's it for the market report. I hope you hit that like button, subscribe, ring that bell for future updates. We do have our Twitter link over here on the side on the right. And you can always follow us in here on Twitter. And also I have my little stock twits name on here. Right there. And that's going to be James Washboard Howard. So hit that like button there too and follow me on here. I'm posting alerts and I also post and they follow up to my Twitter account. And my Twitter account is under I Love Stocks at James Howard 18. And I'm posting a lot of alerts in here and my videos in here too if you miss them from before. But I only like to put good trades in here, ones that I think are really have some momentum. Uh, like this AMC put, you know, bought it on the dip five day rule. She bounced up a little bit. I didn't make much money on it. Got out of the trade. Bears were attacking it. So everybody have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Always remember, I love stocks.